This video is going to be all about iterating by going over the link list one element at a time. Good news is we did that in the two string method, but we did it in a slightly different way. In the two string method, we're going through and trying to grab all the data and then concatenate that into a big string. But we're going to do a lot of the same things. Sometimes you do have to treat the uh, empty list different than the other ones because head is null, so we did that here in two string. Uh, we also, I started current at head.next, and I did use the data from the head, and I used that right here. And usually we won't be treating these separately. The only reason I treated them separately here is because if there's, let's say, five elements inside the list, there's going to be four commas when you concatenate to a string. And so that's why I treated the first element different than the rest of the elements. So here I added the data from the head to result. And then for each other uh, element in the link list, I added a comma and the data because uh, you need one less comma than uh, the number of items you have. So let's go ahead. We're going to make this a private method and we're going to return a node and this is going to be get node and it's going to take an index so an int index all right what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all the nodes this many times so we could deal with if index is zero quickly if uh, well, first of all, if index is zero, that's fine. We can just send back the uh, head. Actually, that's fine. Even if there's no, even if head is null, that's totally okay too. So if index is zero, we're going to return head. Uh, now this works whether or not there are nodes in here. Uh, so index zero is the initial element, and you might be worried, oh, well, if there's no initial element, well, what would happen? Uh, so if there's no initial element, head will be null, and this will return null. If there is an initial element, this will return that, I'm saying element. If there's an initial node, this is going to return that node. Uh, and of course, that's what we're supposed to be returning here. Now we're ready to iterate, and I'm going to write the code slightly differently than we did before. So we're going to need a few things. I don't need to build up this result, so I don't need that. Uh, I am going to have a current node. So let's go ahead, grab this, control shift down, alt shift down a bunch of times. We're not going to start at the, well, I've already treated the head separately than the other one. So actually we are going to start at the second element. So that exactly what we'll do right here. Now I don't really like the for loop here because we're not taking advantage of the declaration part of it. So I'm going to do a while loop instead. Feel free to do a for loop, totally fine. And this for loop is going to be, now it's tempting to say, you know, while current is not equal to null, uh, but in here we have another way to stop. We're only going to do this index number of times. Actually, now I just said I wanted a while loop, but now I kind of want a for loop. All right, so we're going to have to count up how many times. This is going to end up looking a lot like a for loop. Uh, so we're going to start i at, actually we'll start i at 1, because we've already taken care of uh, the 0 case right here, if index is 0. And so we'll go if i is less than index. And now all I want to do is advance current. So current equals, the way we do it, current.next. And that should advance current to the right position. So if I is, uh, if index is indeed one, uh, then this is going to be false because we started I at one. So if index is one, this will be false. It will not loop at all. And what we're going to do is return the value of current, which in this case would be the one after head, which would be the one at index one. And if index was two, then this while loop would need to run exactly one time because current is the 
initially set to the first, not the initial node, but the second node. And this while loop will run one time. And so current will advance once. Uh, well, I should say the while loop will keep running forever unless you go and increment i, because if i and index don't change, this while loop will run forever. So this just increases i each time, and then when i is finally equal to index, this won't run anymore, and then we'll return current. All right, so this is pretty good. Uh, in fact, this will work as long as, we haven't tested it, but uh, it should work as long as index is reasonable. What's reasonable mean? Well, zero is the smallest value, and there's a largest value, which would be size minus one. So what do we do? Index is just an integer. What do we do if it's a bad integer? I have nowhere in here that I really test if it's a bad integer. So we're going to do that right now. If, all right, so what, what's bad? If index is less than zero, that's bad. What else is bad? If index is too big. Now, should index be allowed to equal size or should index only be less than uh, size? What I'm writing here is the bad ones. So if I put equals here, that means it would be bad if index equaled size. That's the border case and that may or may not be bad. Uh, if index is bigger than size, you're looking clearly past the end of the list. So you should not be returning anything useful. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say if size equals index, that's bad as well. So what do we do here? We have to return a node. So it's tempting to return null. But let's think about this. If I return null, I really get no feedback that my index was negative or too big. So this null is really not great. And in fact, uh, you would get the same thing back if head is null, meaning there was zero elements in the list, you'd get the same result as if you put in a negative index. So that's not really great either. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to throw an exception. So what's the syntax for that? Let's look at the uh, list.java and there should be exception named in here. I'm doing control F to find exception. All right. So index out of bounds exception. Here we go. Uh, the method I'm writing is, it will be used in a lot of other methods, but it's not actually listed in here. It's not listed in the list interface because it's private and you would never call it outside of the actual link list code. Uh, one big reason you never call it outside is because it returns a node and where it is a node defined, that's a class that's inside link list. So if you're ever outside link list, node doesn't exist anymore. You cannot uh, access this class unless you're inside of the my linked list class because that's the place it was declared. So you can only use node when you're inside this class right here that we're looking at inside of my linked list. So if I made this public, that would be a bad idea because node only exists inside privately inside of my linked list. Now just to warn you, you didn't see an actual error pop up when I had public here because, well, I don't know why it didn't pop up, but it's only exporting not, oh, there we go. And it's like listed in the morning, but it's not actually an error. So I'd just be mindful. You don't want to return, you don't want to uh, return something that can't exist outside the class with the public method. All right, so we saw the exception. It's right here, index out of bounds exception. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to, instead of returning, now, it seems like you should be able to do this, but the syntax is a little bit different. We'll look at exceptions in a little more detail, but they're slightly different than returning any other object. So the syntax is throw. We need to create a new index out of bounds exception. So throw acts a lot like return, 
we have to create a new object and this index out of bounds exception. I believe you can put a string in here if you want to that can describe what's happening. So you will see that it's the index out of bounds exception when we run this and actually cause this to happen. Uh, but we can add in a string with some more details. Let's think about what's happening if index is less than zero. Uh, let's see, probably something like index equals plus index. So we'll put the value in and should be should be between uh, zero and size. And we'll go ahead and concatenate the actual size of the list into this message. So it's going to print out uh, index equals the value that was used and uh, the expected value should be between zero and size and it'll print out size. All right, so that's the end of get node and we'll use it. Basically, you can use this in almost any method that takes an index. This is a way to advance and grab the node at a specific index. And you're gonna see that sometimes if we wanna grab a node at an index, especially if we wanna remove it or add a new one there, we're actually gonna to want to get the node before the position we want to add or remove from, uh, and that gets a little bit more complicated. So we'll look at that in the future.